Good day, everybody. How are you all? And today we are going to talk about a hypothesis test for standard deviation. So here I go. The sugar content of eight batches of syrup in milligram are measured. The measurements are normally distributed and the sample standard deviation S is equal to three. Can you conclude that the population standard deviation is greater than two? Use alpha, that is the level of significance equal to two. So solution. So our null hypothesis is sigma population standard deviation is equal to two. Sigma is population standard deviation. Standard deviation. Our alternate hypothesis is sigma greater than two. And our uh, sample standard deviation is three. Our sample size is eight. Our alpha, which is the level of significance, the level of significance is 0 0.01. Alpha is the maximum probability of making a type one error. Probability of rejecting eight zero when it is true. When it is true. So I will walk step by step, then at the end I will summarize. So please stick around till the end. I will summarize and give you some tips on how to do this problem. So since uh, the two slanted lines indicating greater than is mid setter H pointing to the right. So this slanted line and this slanted line, mid at an H pointing to right, it's a right tail test. Okay. So what does right tail test means? Rejection region of null hypothesis will be in the right tail of the distribution. Of the distribution. Of the distribution. Uh, let me erase this. Let me erase this just. So rejecting H0 when it is true, okay? And rejection region of H0 will lie in the right tail of the chi-square. This is chi-square, although written as chi, but it is pronounced as chi-square, chi-square distribution, okay? So we have to calculate a test statistic. So, but before I do that, uh, let me show you the chi-square distribution. Actually starts from zero and goes all the way to infinity. It comes close to the horizontal axis, but never really touches it. Chi-square is in the horizontal axis. This is chi-square distribution pronounced as chi, chi-square distribution. Although written as chi, it's actually pronounced as chi-square distribution. As you see, it has an extended tail on the right. So it's positively skewed. And also it starts from zero on the horizontal axis. No chi-square value is be below zero, that is negative. Okay, now each chi-square distribution associated with the degrees of freedom, our degrees of freedom is n minus 1 is 8 minus 1 
because our sample size is 87. So as I was saying, we have to calculate a test statistic. So we will calculate a test statistic. So test statistic is given, what is test statistic? It's a characteristic of the sample that we have collected, of the sample that we have, of the sample that we have collected. We have collected. So, okay, so test statistic is equal to chi-square. So what is the test statistic chi square is equal to n minus one s square divided by sigma zero square where okay uh, sigma zero is the value in null hypothesis in null hypothesis. So our chi square test statistic is equal to eight is our sample size minus one. Our sample standard deviation is three, three square divided by value in the null hypothesis, which is two, two square. So let's move this a little bit up and just make sure n is eight, eight minus one, sample standard deviation is three and the value in the null hypothesis is two. So chi-square test statistic, this is our test statistic, test statistic is seven times nine, three square is nine divided by four, or 63 divided by four, which is equal to, so seven, multiplied by three square, which is nine divided by two square, which is four, and it is 15.75. Now, as you know, the alternate hypothesis is right tailed. So test statistic also falls in the right tail. Let's assume the chi test statistic that we have calculated falls somewhere over here. Okay, so this is my test statistic chi square equal to 15.75. Let's calculate the area to the right. So let me explain what's going on. Let me move up. Since the hypothesis test, hypothesis test is right tailed is right till p value which is the probability probability of obtaining a test statistic at least as extreme as 15.75. So P value, this P value, okay. Uh, let me put the parenthesis here and remove that parenthesis over here, okay. So, so what is the p-value? Let me move this a little bit up. P-value is the area under the chi-square curve, under the chi-square curve to the right of the test statistic, to the right of 15.75. Now, uh, let me draw the curve again. Oops, give me a minute, I'll fix it.
Okay, so let's uh, get rid of this. Okay, so I was going to draw the curve one more time, the chi-square distribution. And this is your chi-square distribution. Okay, and we have calculated test statistic is 15.75. Okay, and let me see if I can make it a little lighter. So let's do this one. Okay. So P value is the area. This is your P value. Okay. So now if you remember this curve stretches to oops. We get all of this. I will draw it again. No way. Okay. And first, let me go to the blue pen and uh, let me move everything to the right. Okay. And since the hypothesis test is right till p value is the area. P value is the probability of obtaining a test statistic at least as extreme as 15.75 is the area to the uh, right. So P value is the area to the right under the under the chi square curve to the right of. So I was going to draw the diagram. Let me do with the blue pen itself. So this is 15.75 and this is your P value. The area under the curve to the right of the test statistic. So how do you find this P value? Well, we have a function called uh, chi-square CDF in our calculator. So press the second key, then the verse key on the third row and then scroll down to chi-square CDF, okay? Our lower, we are starting from 15.75. Now, CDF is the cumulative distribution function. That is, it will find the area under the curve from lower of 15.75. Sorry, this is not area. So, it will find the area from the lower of 15.75 to the upper and this uh, curve, as I told you, this curve stretches to this curve is stretching to oops, okay. So this curve is stretching to positive infinity on the right hand side. So the main upper is. I type 1, then I will press the second button, and then the comma button. Where is the comma button? Second button is in the top left corner. Comma button is on top of the seventh button in the calculator. If we do that, then we'll get a small capital E and 99. Here E stands for exponent. What does it mean? 1 followed by 99 zeros. So my upper is 1 E 99 and my degrees of freedom. Remember my sample size is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. And then I go down to paste and hit enter and enter. Okay. So on then second verse, scroll down to chi-square CDF, which is number 8. My lower is 15.75, my upper is 1, then second button, comma button on top of 7 button gives me the E, 99. And my degrees of freedom is sample size minus 1 is 7. And I pressed enter and enter. So my P value is equal, is area to the right of 
and this p value is equal to 0 0.0275 okay compare that with alpha equal to 0 0.01 that was our level of significance let me make sure that that was our level of significance yes alpha is level of significance is 0 0.01 so what is the bottom line the bottom line is p is less than alpha i'm sorry p is greater than alpha so pardon me p is greater than alpha because 0 0.0275 is greater than 0 0.01 decision do not reject h0 do not reject h0 reject h0 conclusion at alpha equal to point zero one, there is not enough evidence, not enough evidence there is not enough evidence to support h one to support h one which states that sigma is greater than 2. So we are not supporting it because we did not reject the null hypothesis. So let me walk you slowly through the steps that I have taken. So if we go to the top, it says the sugar content of 8 batches of syrup in milligram are measured. The measured data are normally distributed the measurements are no normally distributed and the sample standard deviation S is equal to 3. Can you conclude that the uh, population standard deviation is greater than 2? So your alternate sigma is greater than 2, sigma being population standard deviation. It's a right tail test. So we calculate a test statistic, um, chi square equal to n minus 1. N is a sample size times S square, which is sample variance divided by sigma zero square. Sigma zero is the value in the null hypothesis. So it is chi square is seven times three square divided by two square, which is 15.75. This is your test statistic. It's a characteristic of the sample that you, we have collected. Now, because this is a right tail test, the p-value or probability value of obtaining a test statistic at least as extreme as 15.75 is the area under the curve to the right of 15.75. So we go to our calculator, we press the second button, then the verse, and then we scroll down to chi-square CDF, which is number 8 in TI 84. My lower, I start my calculation from 15.75. My upper is 1. E, E stands for exponent 99. That means one followed by 99 zeros, which is a very large number on the right. That signifies infinity in the right. Degrees of freedom is sample size minus one is seven. Paste, enter and enter. And the p-value works out to 0 0.0275. Compare that with alpha equal to 0 0.01. P is greater than alpha. Decision do not reject H0. If we do not reject H0, then we also do not support the alternate hypothesis. So I stop here today. If you have any question, comment, please do not hesitate to write me a note. If you like this video, please give me a hearty thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, share with your friends. You and your friends, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button. Uh, you know, I have tons of problems solved just for you. So please do not forget to visit me next time when I'll be back with another interesting problem, interesting solution. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a nice day.